Okay, two things to say at the beginning of this video. I make no apologies for how long it's going to be and I also make no apologies for quite how much I'm going to talk about me seeing Aaron Tveit in Moulin Rouge and him doing the op top. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Chloe, welcome back to my channel, thank you for being here today. Today's video is going to be my theatre wrap up for the month of February. So this is a new thing I've started doing on my channel as of last month. Basically, it's like when I do my reading wrap ups every month, I'm going to do a theatre wrap up where I talk about all the shows that I've seen during the last month. Usually, sometimes they will have to overlap a little bit just because of like when I get to film these. But this month we are just talking about what I saw in the month of February. I will give you like more in-depth thoughts. I've talked about a lot of these in vlogs and things like that. but where obviously not everyone wants to watch vlogs and, and also I don't always give like full in-depth reviews and things like that. I say reviews like I'm getting used to doing theatre reviews so like they're not necessarily like the most polished yet but hopefully they will get that way the more I do them but essentially I give you the my more in-depth thoughts I give you like star ratings on them exactly like I would do with a book wrap-up but with theatre. So February was an exciting month and um, for anyone who has been keeping track on what's been going on on this channel you will know that during February February I went to New York for a week. I went to New York for a week and while I was there I saw eight shows on Broadway. So obviously that's going to be a fair chunk of this wrap up. I will say I saw eight shows but realistically I saw eight performances but I saw five shows because some of the shows I may have seen more than once but we'll get to that in a little bit. You already know what one of them is. Anyway what I'm going to do is actually normally I would normally when I do wrap-ups like this is I try to do them in the order that I saw things or when it's books in the order that I read things. I'm not going to do it like that this month just just because I know that I can get the other two shows like sort of out of the way quicker at the beginning because they're a little bit different than the regular things I see as well and I maybe don't have quite as in-depth thoughts on them. So we're going to start off, we're actually going to go a little bit back to front. So we're going to start off with the last show that I saw in the month of February which was completely different to what I normally see because it was a pantomime and yes pantomimes in February sounds like a little bit of a strange concept because these days pantomimes are generally associated with the Christmas period. That's not always been the thing when pantomimes first started they were very much like a thing that started at Christmas and then carried on right through to Easter I believe it was possibly even longer but it's a tradition of that sort of time period that this particular production is drawing reference from. It's actually it's actually mentioned in the program by one of the actors that is in it saying, saying that the more prestigious pantomime stayed put from Christmas to Easter and that was where they discovered a love of theatre. In Sheffield every year we have two main theatres so every year we have one theatre that does a Christmas pantomime and one theatre that does a Christmas musical. I will always go to the musical over the pantomime. They're not normally like festive themed, it just happens to be that they put a musical on over Christmas. This show is Standing at Sky's Edge, which I didn't actually see and now I potentially want to go and see in London, but that's a whole other thing. But this pantomime is a touring production. It started off in London over the Christmas period and is now touring the UK. And, and this pantomime was Mother Goose starring Sir Ian McKellen and John Bishop. I, and so I went to see it because I wanted to see Ian McKellen in something. That was basically the entire reason I went. Actually, my mum ended up buying tickets and she didn't think that I'd want to go and I'm like no I will go and see that I just want to see a McKellen on stage obviously it was a fun time like I'm still not a huge panto lover but I feel like it was one of the better ones that I've seen that I say this like I've seen loads of them but I, I've seen bits and pieces of things like on tv and stuff like that and I feel like and I feel like obviously there's always that like level of humor that you're trying to get right like the balance of it as to who it's going to appeal to because obviously they are for small children but they are also family entertainment so they're there for the adults as well there's like a mixture of jokes that will kind of go over the children's heads and there's sort of references to things in there this one in particular had a lot of references to musical theatre which I think obviously made me enjoy it quite a lot more like there was a whole Les Mis reference there was a bit where they did there was a bit where Anna Jane Casey sang Don't Rain on My Parade from Funny Girl and yeah there was a lot of like little bits and pieces that I felt like made it more like a panto that I would want to see I think some of the ones that we get in Sheffield every year are not necessarily the ones ones I want to see whereas this one like struck a nice balance. Uh, John Bishop isn't necessarily a comedian that I like love. He's not he's not someone that I dislike either. He's just not someone that I would like choose to go and watch his comedy but he was funny when he came on. He did like a little bit of stand-up at the beginning of the show. He was the one that kind of tied it all together throughout and it was just generally like a fun time. There's not really too much else I can say about it which is why I've said I'll talk about this first because I said I'm not going to be here like critiquing things that I didn't like about it because the only things that I didn't like about it is just that inherently the genre is not my favourite but 
for what it was i had a good time I'd, I'd probably give it like a three and a half stars which is not a bad rating at all again it's just because panto is not usually my thing but for what it was i very much enjoyed it and i'm very glad that i went to see it so that was the last thing that i saw in the month of february and now we're gonna like jump back to the first thing i saw in the month of february which still isn't actually the things that i saw in new york i went to see one thing before we flew to new york so i went to london on the sunday when we flew to new york on the monday then i went to see a show that, is, that isn't like a typical theater show it's a concert but it's but it is very much sort of theater adjacent it was all like musical theater performers so i'm going to include it in this wrap up and that was ben rahala and his west end besties so ben rahala is a musical director who's known for working with the likes of jeremy jordan he always works on his concerts he's also doing the ariana debose concert that i'm going to in april and and basically throughout his career he's kind of made friends with lots of different performers he tends he, he tends to pop up in lots of different places and whilst he's been coming to the uk to come and visit to do concerts generally like the ones with jeremy jordan and things like that he has made friends with some people who work on the west end and he, and he decided to do a concert which was calling on all of his west end besties to come and sing some songs with him and it was a mixture of songs so there was some musical theater in it there was a lot of pop songs as well there was a lot of sort of like British pop from like the 90s 2000s times like we had Spice Girls we had S Club 7 and there were things like that that which is just music that he happens to really love there are also some mashups in here Ben is, ben is known for putting together mashups of things the uh, Ariana DeBose BAFTA performance that's been going around the internet over the last week was partly created by him so you can so you can imagine it was a fun night and it was a very very fun night I did have a good time I did wish that there was a little bit more of the mashups like that is what i know ben for and it felt like we didn't really get those until like the very end of the show and they just weren't quite the like level that i expected them to be i don't know if it's just because like maybe that there was less rehearsal time for this like they only really rehearsed it from what i've seen on social media in like the week before and the cast kept changing as well like because there was lots and lots of people here but even like some of the people listed in the program weren't actually there because they had to pull out the last minute so i feel like maybe didn't have him much time to work on some of the mashups and things like he normally would do with people that he works with sort of long term um because the ones that sort of worked best were the ones where the mashup had actually already been created before and it just happened to be a different person singing it so like so like some people came on and sang the mashup from Roger than Hammerstein, Cinderella, and the last five years, the ten minutes ago, the next ten minutes uh, mashup, and which I which I absolutely love that arrangement and how that's been put together, and that was really really good. But then some of the others just felt like it was sort of we sang one song and then we went into another, whereas that one feels more like they were sort of woven into each other a bit better. I don't know if that's making sense, but all the performances on the night were obviously absolutely fantastic. So some some of the pop songs were ones that I wouldn't necessarily have chosen to listen to because I'm not that big of a pop song listener but i did have a good time i am glad that i went i probably i'd probably give this night like a four star but it just feel weird to rate this one because obviously it's not rating it in the same way as some of the other things where they have like an actual narrative to them but just generally had a good time very happy that i went and i'm very much looking forward to the next concert that i'll see ben at which is the Ariana DeBose one because I feel like there's going to be some exciting things in that because it feels like they've been preparing for that one for a while so I'm excited to see what they've come up with. Okay so every other show that I saw in the month of February I did not see in this country I saw in New York so what we're going to do is we're just going to talk through the week. Say this actually brain brain formulating how to do this video on the spot because clearly I do not plan these videos very well in advance. Um what I'll actually do is there were two shows that I saw multiple times so what I'll do is first I'll talk through the shows that I only saw once and then I will build up to the ones that I saw the most times during the week because because they're the ones where I'm gonna like want to talk the most we all know this so let's start off with what was actually the second show that I saw while I was there and um, because the first show that I saw on the Tuesday evening was one of the repeated viewings but on the Wednesday afternoon I went to a matinee and I went to go and see Funny Girl. This was starring Leah Michelle in the role of Fanny Bryce. It also had Ramin Karamalu as Nick Arnstein. Now there's been like a lot of drama around this production from like when it was originally on with Beanie Feldstein and then and then she ended up leaving earlier than her contract was due to finish and then Leah Michelle has come into it instead and and people and people have various thoughts about Leah Michelle as a person which 
I'm not even gonna go into that right now but she really can sing like I can't I can't deny that watching it she was a very she was very very good vocally in the role she was actually a lot better acting wise than I expected her to be like I expected her to be able to sort of hold her own within it but I didn't know she'd like really be able to do the comedy side of it I mean like the clues in the name is called funny girl like there is quite a lot of comedy that has to go into this role and I didn't know if she'd be able to do it and I'd seen clips of her before and I was and again felt like she was going to be okay in it but they were from like quite early on in her run and now and now she's been in it for a few months what I saw on the stage actually felt like she'd really really settled into the role and she, she was really good like I don't actually have any particular complaints about her at all I had a really good time seeing it I'm glad that I did go and see it I really really enjoyed Ruby and Caramelou as Nikki Onstein like I like Ruby and Caramelou anyway I've, I've seen him on stage a few times now so I've seen him in Phantom of the Opera I've seen him in Love Never Dies I've seen him in Le Miz in a couple of different roles because I've seen him as Andras and I've seen him as Valjean and he was actually probably the main reason that I wanted to see this show like like when it was first announced for Broadway I actually I was actually potentially looking at going to New York last year um to see it when it was Beanie Feldstein and Maureen Caramelou and I wanted to see it because I wanted to see Maureen Caramelou. Funny Girl is one of my favourite films of all time, it's one of my favourite musicals of all time. I've seen it on the West End and um, it was supposed to have Sheridan Smith in it but it was during the time that she took a leave of absence from the show so I ended up seeing Natasha Barnes in it and I really really loved that production and this is actually using the same version of the book as that one is because it's been updated since it was originally on in the 60s and it's using the same sort of version of the show of that but obviously it is a different production in terms of like the staging and, and things i really really loved what they did with the staging in this by the way I, I keep jumping around from one thing to another and how i'm talking about this i did say these wouldn't be the most polished reviews and and partly because i really really love that west end production and, and partly because when they announced the casting of ramin caramelo as nikki arnstein i thought that is very good casting that was one of the reasons why i wanted to go and see this last year that trip didn't end up happening because of various things we just never ended up booking it but obviously we ended up booking this year and for while I'm there I would probably kick myself if I didn't go and see it and I'm very very glad that I did I had a great time as I said I'd probably give this one like a four and a half star like it's not my favorite thing I saw all week but I had a really really good time seeing it and I'm very very glad that I did see it and yeah she can she can really sink again I'm just gonna come back to that she can really really sink editing Chloe just jumping in really quick to say one of the things about Funny Girl that I really enjoyed on the day that I forgot to mention and it's a really like weird thing to enjoy because it's actually when things went slightly wrong um there was a moment where Ramin Caramelou broke basically actually I think it happened twice where he just could not hold back his laughter and I always find little moments like that really really fun because it sort of shows you that they are like real people acting on the stage in front of you like it's one of the things that makes the performances different every day but there was a couple of times it happened I think it was once where he was just talking to Leah Michelle as Fanny Bryce and it was something that she did and then there was another time where um, he comes onto the stage and he is not wearing very many clothes and the audience reaction to it was um quite loud and that made him laugh and he could not start the song that he was supposed to start and I just like those little bits in it. There's actually a moment like that that I will talk about in Moulin Rouge as well. You'll see another editing Chloe clip in a minute because I remembered one that I'd not talk about there. But yeah, just thought I'd point that out. So again, we're going to skip over a show that I saw on the Wednesday evening. We will definitely get back to that one in a minute. But the show that I saw for the Thursday matinee was a little bit different again. It is not your typical like musical with sort of a narrative to it. It was more of a one-man show. This is Anthony Rapp's Without You. So Anthony Rapp is one of the the original cast members of Rent from like when it was originally produced in 1996 I believe it was and this show kind of tells the story of Rent first being performed and him sort of first getting cast in that and taking it from the workshops to the off-Broadway production to the Broadway production and everything that goes alongside that particularly to do with the writer of Rent, Jonathan Larson, who very sadly passed away from an aneurysm the night before the off-Broadway production was due to start. It also talks about Anthony Rapp's own life sort of outside of that and particularly involving his mother who sadly passed away from cancer during the original Broadway production of Ren. So it's a lot about grief, losing someone that you love and also and that all kind of tied in with the sort of happier things that were happening in terms of this musical being put on but also the themes of Rent itself are all about loss so it very very much ties into it and the way that he told this was said it was like a one-man show so there were bits where he was just talking 
talking to the audience and then he would break in song and the songs would be some of them were ones that were actually written for the show but the majority of the songs were from rent so he would do like little snippets of bits to kind of when he was talking about a particular part of like rehearsing rent he would then break into a song from it and i did not expect this show to kind of affect me as much as it did like obviously i knew what it was about i knew what the subject matter was but like it's a 90 minute show and i would say for a solid 60 minutes of it i was just in tears like it was just the way obviously the subject matter as i said is very very sad but the way that he delivered it as well also that combined with the fact that like rent is my favorite musical of all time and getting to hear him sing these songs on stage in front of me was like a whole different experience as well so some of it was like crying because it was happy some of it was crying because it was sad but there was just a lot a lot of tears which i am not like a massive crier so, like i have friends who cry at pretty much everything and i'm not one of those people but this show just really really got to me and i think that's testament to how well it was performed and how well it was put together and yeah i feel like obviously like i said i think part of it is from like more personal connections to the show as well and like i said like how much i love like rent as a thing and like I said being able to see this actor but i feel like even if you don't have that connection with like the material that he's talking about i feel like it's still a very effective show because i think he does a very good job of putting across this relationship particularly when he's talking about his relationship with his mother but i think that is pretty much as cohesive as i'm gonna get for my review for this one i will give this one five stars i, I really really had a good time with this one if good time is the right way to describe it okay and now we skip over three performances that i went to because those were the same shows that i've already skipped over once but i will get to them in a minute we'll go to the last show that i saw in new york instead and that was some like it hot which is a new musical which is loosely based on the film with the same name from the 50s 60s whatever it was the marilyn monroe film anyway um i say loosely based because there were things within that that they've had to sort of bring up to being for a more modern day audience which i will get to in a minute and um, part of the reason why i went to go and see this particular show like because there were obviously plenty of other new shows i could have gone to see i do slightly regret not seeing some of the other things but that is because i chose to go and see other shows multiple times which again we will get to in a minute so, but i am happy i saw this one and, and the reason why me and meg chose to go and see this one like before we got there wasn't because like we'd heard great things about it or anything like that it's because there was a performer that we really liked in it which is christian ball who like amongst other things was in like the original broadway cast of legally blonde who was in a cast of falsettos that i really really love that production of and watch it on a regular basis because there's a pro shot of it he was also in the tv show smash and that is one of the reasons that we went to go and see this and we both kind of went in with fairly low expectations like it wasn't that we thought we were going to hate it but we were just like oh it's just like you know something to do on the last night it'll be fun and i feel like we were both like very pleasantly surprised i know meg particularly enjoyed it because it's like an old-fashioned style musical what i mean by that it's like there's a lot of big tap numbers and things and that is something that she very much loves in a show and i did really like like the visual of it i think that how that all came together was really good actually there were two shows i saw with big tap numbers in it during this week because funny girl also has like a tap section in the middle but yeah i feel like some of the like staging and things in this felt very much like that sort of old-fashioned musical and it was just like a fun sort of comedy farce type thing on stage particularly like there's a scene towards the end where they use a lot of doors and they're all sort of running around and ch chasing each other and how that comes together on stage like i feel like it's just it, it does harken back to that sort of older style of theatre and i really really enjoyed that i did enjoy the performances in here as well particularly jay harrison i don't know if it's g or gear I really should have looked this up before saying it but their performance was fantastic and their character in particular actually is the one that's been brought more up to date for a modern audience so what i mean by that is the basic story of some, some like it hot is that these these two men and who are on the run because they witness a gangster doing something and then he decides to chase after them and they hide away with an all-female band and they have to dress in drag basically to hide away and it's like that sort of caper of them running away and then eventually at some point they're going to get found out and obviously a lot of the jokes from a film like that that's made a while ago are going to be like the the joke is going to be about the fact that it's a man in a dress and that is not necessarily the sort of thing that we want these days there's been a lot of discussion about musicals that are sort of relying on that like with the more recent productions of like mrs doubtfire and tootsie i know that's been a big conversation that's been had this one does kind of try to get around that by why having this sort of extra layer to it with one of the characters involving the idea of them dressing as a woman and i'm not going to go into it too much because i don't know like how much 
you're necessarily supposed to know going into it but it has obviously been something that's been considered when writing this and and I did really like the way that the character of Daphne was handled in this in particular obviously I'm not talking from like an own voices perspective so I'm not going to like go in depth on whether or not like there was more that could have been done but from like a performance point of view the character of Daphne was fantastic I, and I can see why when there's talk of like award season and things if anything from the show is being considered it's probably going to be that performance the only things I will say with this is that the songs I don't think they were particularly memorable so it's written by the people who wrote Hairspray which is also the people who wrote the songs for Smash the bombshell show in Smash which is a Marilyn Monroe inspired show that is in the TV show Smash and one of the songs from that is actually in this which is very strange I will say the version that is in Smash is superior like I listened to it this week and I was like oh it was it is better in this than it was in some like it hot they've made it into like they've they've changed sort of the meaning of it in this and it's just not as fun it's the song called Let's Be Bad but I did I did but I did enjoy it it was nice to like have a song that I knew in it the rest of the songs like some of them were good but I don't feel like there's any particular standouts like I can't remember a lot of them afterwards but they were okay in the moment like I said the whole show was just like a good in the moment sort of thing it's not one that I'll necessarily go out of my way to watch again but I thought that some of the performances were very good and it was still worth a watch I think that's probably the best way of saying it I'd probably give this one like a three and a half to a four star so this is probably the lowest rated of the things that I saw during my time in New York but not a bad thing at all like I just really really enjoyed everything else that I saw. Okay so we're circling back around so we're gonna get to the show that I saw twice while I was in New York and this is the first show that I saw so I saw this on the Tuesday night and basically before we went we had pre-booked well actually we pre-booked a few of the shows but as soon as we booked the holiday we pre-booked two shows and originally we were just gonna go and see each of them once and then like a month after we were like we're gonna want to see those more than once maybe we should book more tickets so we did and there was a show that I really wanted to go and see and there was the show that Meg really wanted to go and see but we both wanted to see the shows like as well but it was just like this one was the one that I was particularly pushing for and this is the one she was particularly pushing for so the one that I saw twice was obviously the one that Meg was particularly pushing for she actually saw this three times I haven't mentioned we split up a few times uh, when we went to see shows so she didn't see Funny Girl she went to see Phantom of the Opera and she didn't see Without You because she went on a sightseeing day while I went to go and see that everything else we went to go and see together and this one is a show that I have heard about a while ago only really listened to in the last year mainly because of Meg because it is like her favorite show I think it's possibly safe to say now that it's actually her favorite musical I feel like before she saw it on stage like it was her favorite musical in like in, con in theory but she'd not actually seen it on stage yet to confirm it I, f I feel like it probably is at this point but I'm sure she will tell us in the comments if it is or not but I really started listening to it in this last year because she spoke about it so much I'm like right I will finally actually listen to this and I very very much enjoyed the cast recording I knew I was going to enjoy the show I don't think I knew how much I was going to enjoy it because I actually like really really loved this and I really want them to announce the West End transfer for it immediately because there's rumours that it's going to happen and there's one particular like, theatre blogger who keeps putting up like rumours of things and then when they are like confirmed he'll retweet it saying oh look now it's been confirmed and he's put this Hades Town rumour up in recent weeks and I'm like okay well can you make this be one of the confirmed ones now please anyway I've just told you what the show is it's Hades Town so so we went to see this on the Tuesday night and we also went to see it on the Thursday night. Meg ended up going back to see it again on the Saturday and I don't even know where to start with this. Like there's there's so many things. I did actually make notes. I've been doing this entire video and like rambling and not actually looking at my notes for anything. So let me just grab this. I have like a little help, helpful theatre notebook these days. Um, so Hades Town. First things first. Like the actual like the the music in this is phenomenal. I knew this before going into it. Like the music is very very beautiful. Like it's sung through as well, and it all sort of just flows on from like one song to the next very very effortlessly. And I don't really have too much else to say about the music. Like it's just it, just listen to it. It's so good. And I think that's one of the things with it when I said that I didn't know how much I was gonna love it is that obviously I knew the music, but from what I've seen of the stage and things like that before like I wasn't sure what they were going to do with the staging of it because it didn't feel like they did anything like too like big or grand or anything like that which they, they do and they don't like there's a couple of bigger moments where things happen with the stage that I maybe wasn't expecting and there's one particular bit so let me tell you the storyline of Hades Town. I'm being very like rambly with this video but I did warn you of this so Hades Town basically is a Greek myth retelling it focuses on two 
main couples, so two main myths really. So you've got the Hades and Persephone myth, which is about Hades, like God of the Underworld, and his wife, and basically Persephone spends half of the year down in the underworld with Hades, and then half of the year up on, and then half of the year on Earth, and that is how sort of the seasons work, is that when she's up on Earth, it's summer, and when she's down in Hades, and when she's down in the underworld, it is winter. And their particular storyline in this is basically about them kind of growing apart from each other and also to do with like her not necessarily spending the right amount of time in different places so the world is kind of all out of balance and that's like a big part of how the story starts then that is intertwined with the story of Orpheus and Eurydice so Orpheus and Eurydice at the start of this show sort of meet fall in love you see their relationship develop and they live on earth and then when and when it is the winter and Persephone is down in the underworld it's very difficult to live on earth because like people are starving and freezing and it's not a great time in general and Orpheus is trying to write a song that will help to sort of restore the balance in the world and spring make spring come again but that doesn't necessarily help Eurydice in the meantime and then in her storyline then intertwines with Hades she ends up making some deals she ends up in the underworld and things go from there and I think that's as much as I'm going to tell you of the story but like it's enough to get along with and it's enough to know that when I say there's like a change to the setting of it most so the first act takes place on earth and then the second act is mostly down below in what is called Hades Town in this show and the way that the stage kind of moves to show you the difference between earth and Hades Town is very very well done like I wasn't expecting that part I will say we sat in two parts of the theatre for this show we sat in the orchestra which is stalls for the UK and the mezzanine which is like the circle for the UK usually and I feel like that particular part where the stage sort of transformed a little bit worked better from the the orchestra I just feel like it had more of that grand effect to it there was another bit later on to do with like leaving Katie's town that perhaps worked a little bit better from the mezzanine but also like I liked being quite low down because I liked being able to see the look on their faces which was heartbreaking but the looks on their faces anyway we'll get to that um the thing one of the things that I really really loved about this show was the choreography in it which again was something that I was not necessarily expecting going into it because it doesn't strike me as a show that's gonna have like a lot of choreography necessarily like it's not a dance show at all but the dancing and the movement that they did was just really really beautiful like I, ju I don't know how to explain it but just some of the bits particularly I think it was all I've ever known it was like when you're t telling sort of Orpheus and Eurydice's story of them coming together just just the way that that was choreographed I really really loved it so yeah I think what essentially I'm trying to say is that as good as the music is this show works so well seeing it all tied together and although it's quite simple it's so effective and I think I think that's what my main sort of takeaway from it was also we're gonna have to talk about the cast because the cast was absolutely fantastic so you still got some of the original cast members in this so for Orpheus and Eurydice you've got Ava Nobzada who was just impeccable like she sounded so so good I've seen her in things before and I've always been impressed by her like I saw her in Miss Saigon and I don't love Miss Saigon but I loved her in it I've seen her in Les Mis and I loved her in that she played my favorite character and she was just so good and, and I feel like this kind of tied together like everything I liked about her performances like it was just there, there's nothing bad to say about what she was like in this Reeve Carney was fantastic as Orpheus like I feel like he did a lot of the sort of nervous like awkwardness of Orpheus that again like comes through a little bit on the cast recording but he's completely different when you see it in person and that was one of my favorite things about him like the awkwardness of his character like he was he was just a mess and in, he, he, was, he was just a mess and it was adorable and um, Lilius White on the original cast recording is played by Andrea Shields so Hermes is male in the original cast recording when they've come to replace him when he left on Broadway they've replaced him with Lilius White and made Hermes female and and I absolutely love the change of it. Like, it's, it doesn't change anything about the story necessarily, but Lily White was just so good. Like, some of the choices that she made for the notes of things, it was just like, I was, yeah, just not, again, nothing bad to say at all. And then the one that I really, really want to point out is Joel Blackman as Persephone. Because I love Persephone as a character anyway. Like, her songs are some of the ones that I come back to a lot on the cast recording. Like, I've since I first listened to it, I've loved her as a character. But again just the choices that were made by Joel Blackman in this were really really good because it felt like sometimes some act because it, it felt like there were times where she could have chosen to go for a cleaner vocal and like a prettier sound 
of a character and she didn't she chose a character every time and like wasn't afraid to make it like and, and wasn't afraid to sort of make it less pretty if that makes sense and it worked really really well for Persephone as a character but it just had this sort of raw quality to it that just made everything come together so well I am rambling again in case you can't tell I really really love this show I'm gonna give it five stars obviously I don't think I had anything else in my notes oh, okay the only <sighs> Let me, let me just have a look at my notes. The rest of my notes says, but why does it have to be so sad? Which, yeah, why? Um, the ensemble, actually, yes, I do want to shout out the ensemble because there's, when I was saying about like the choreography and things like that, they carry a lot of that. And the second time I saw it, like I particularly noticed that. Some more of the staging that particularly like stood out for me is the song Wait For Me with the lights that are sort of flying around the stage. I just really, really loved how that was done. And then it does say on here um, that I still hoped the ending might change that is a big thing about this like it says at the very beginning of the show it's a sad song but we're gonna sing it anyway and basically when I'm watching it I was still like hoping that the ending would be different and that maybe this time he wouldn't have to go down that way but it did it still did and when Meg went to see it on the Saturday it still happened that way as well and it's very sad but it did anyway my last note literally just says West End Transfer ASAP please <laughs> five stars Okay, so we have one more show to talk about. I wonder what it could be. So the um the the we were so so New York holiday was in the plans for a while, but it was supposed to happen in May. And the reason it got moved up was because a certain show on Broadway that I can actually see in London. This is what's ridiculous. I'm seeing it in like just over a week's time. But anyway. A certain show announced that a original cast member would be coming back into the cast and like for anyone who doesn't know like sort of the story of me and watching Moulin Rouge because that's the show I'm about to talk about um Moulin Rouge is my favorite film of all time like I know I keep saying things are my favorites in this but essentially my favorite film of all time is Moulin Rouge my favorite musical of all time is Rent they are two different things um but yeah Moulin Rouge is my favourite film of all time I love it so so much I have been waiting for them to do a musical production of Moulin Rouge for so many years because it's been like in the works and then never actually like oh it's been in talks but then never actually happened for a while obviously then it did start happening and then the pandemic happened and I actually had a trip to New York booked in 2020 for my 30th birthday that got cancelled because of the pandemic and during that time I should have hopefully depending on like obviously I don't know if he would have announced it had left by this point but the plan at the time was hopefully to see quite a lot of the original cast of Moulin Rouge before they left and then because that trip got cancelled because obviously we then couldn't travel over for a while or maybe just didn't feel comfortable to travel over people slowly but surely sort of left the cast and then the person that I particularly wanted to see which which was Aaron Tveit as Christian Christian the composer he left last May and I thought okay so I'm not going to get to see that but I've seen it on the West End at this point actually at that point I've seen it on the West End with a slightly disappointing cast and I was like really really loved the show but didn't love the cast and that was a whole issue as well but then it was fine because then we got a really good cast in the West End we got Jamie Moscato as Christian which which we all know I loved that as well and it was like okay so that's fine I've seen a good Christian now it's absolutely fine and then in December they announced that Aaron Tveit was coming back to the Broadway cast for a 12-week run and me and Meg decided to move our holiday up so that I could go and see Moulin Rouge with Aaron Tveit in it so we could go and see Moulin Rouge with Aaron Tveit in it but like the reason it was moved was because I very much wanted to see him in it obviously and that is what I did. This is, by the way, these are playbills I'm holding up. Um, unlike UK theatres where you have to pay for all the brochures and programmes and things, in the playbills you just get them handed to you for free when you go in. It's great. Um, so I have like three of these and look, they're the limited edition February ones with Aaron Tveit and Ashley Laurent on the front who I am going to talk about a lot in this as well because she is fantastic but we'll get to that in a second. So we went to go and see this on the Wednesday night. We then ended up booking another ticket to go and see it on the Friday night. We had both those pre-booked before we went and then when we were there I ended up going to the TKTS booth and booking I ended up going for the TKTS booth and booking half price tickets for like very close in the center of the orchestra and I was like four rows away from the front of the stage and I'm I have no regrets about going to see it for a third time for the Saturday matinee because it was so good um thoughts on the show I mean I've already given you so many thoughts on like Moulin Rouge in general every other time I've been to see it so I don't think I need to tell you about like the actual show itself but I will say like there's something about walking into that theatre and seeing how they've done up the theatre every mm -hmm. single time 
like every single time I feel like it was even more so as well because this is the first time I've seen it from the orchestra or the stalls so like every other time I've seen it I was sort of looking down on it whereas this time like was the first time I was like really really close to the stage and sort of when the sign lifted up like it was lifting up above me and when like Satine descended down she was sort of descending down from like I could actually sort of see her descending down whereas like every other time I was sort of at it from a different angle so that did make a big difference and I do think I would like to see it in the stalls whenever I see it again because like it, it, it made a lot of a difference to me also also like we sat in different places within the stalls so the first day we were there we were actually sat very close to where a lot of the actors came on and off the stage which I was not expecting so that gave like a whole new thing because you sort of saw like extra little bits of their performance from that bit as well the second time we were sat like really towards the back bit in the center and then as I said the third time I went to see it, I was very very close and I will get to that particular performance in a minute I'm going to talk about everything apart from like the reason why I went to see it first because I'm going to get all that out of the way I'm going to stop holding this up and actually just go to my notes because again I have notes so my first notes just says I got I finally got there but we have a lot of notes about like tiny little things within a certain performance which again I will get to in a minute but let's actually just talk about the rest of the cast before I get to talking about Aaron Tabet as Christian because like obviously that's the bit I'm going to have the most thoughts on Ashley Loren as Satine like my mind was just blown like she's she's the third person I've seen play the character of Satine and I have not and and I and I've said before like I didn't love the original London cast I didn't love either of the lead roles like they weren't bad necessarily but but it just felt like the two of them didn't necessarily work like fit like the two of the, the two of their portrayals didn't necessarily fit together properly and as a whole they just weren't my favorite performances of those roles Melissa the the current West End satin I actually do really like but there are still parts where I'm like like when she very first comes on it feels like the first song isn't necessarily the strongest point and then as it goes from further into the performance it gets stronger Ashley Loren from the second she came on stage was just fantastic like I don't even know how to describe like her voice is perfect for these songs she like like obviously within musical theatre there are different types of songs and a lot of what's been moved towards in more recent eras is that sort of pop sounding musical and her voice just sounds perfect for that sort of music that sort of like modern day musical theatre music and obviously Moulin Rouge is like pop songs but done with like a more theatrical version to them and I just feel like her voice suits it very very well her version of Firework was like amazing there are particular like choices that she's made again because I've listened to the cast recording so much and because I've seen other performers of it I can hear like the bits that she's particularly chosen and like there's a bit where there's a line in like your colours burst which like the way she sings that I loved it there's a, there's a little option up that she does in Elephant Love Medley when she sings the torn section that I absolutely adore as well it's just all of these like small little bits but then also like her acting like her characterization for Satine was just the right sort of balance that I want like was just like the right sort of tone that I wanted it to be and it worked really really well with the other actors on stage as well because like I said with the first time I saw Moulin Rouge on the West End that was my issue was that it felt like they weren't necessarily like playing well against each other whereas in this version it felt very very much like everybody was playing very very well together. The actor playing Carol Ziegler, Eric Anderson, was very very good. He was really fun and he was one of the ones as well sort of doing like extra little bits as he was coming on and off the stage and because of where we were sat on the first night we got to see like a couple of extra bits of him and um, also when I, where I was sat on the last day I saw it as well um because like you could really see him sort of interacting with the audience and Ziggler needs to do that and I felt like he had a really good way of doing that so I loved him I also really really liked um I also really really liked Andre Ward who is Toulouse Lautrec at the minute so the original Toulouse Lautrec from Broadway had actually left the week before we went to see it Andre Ward I believe had done it on the national tour in America and had come into the Broadway cast and again did some like interesting choices with the role that I'd not seen done before and and now I'm just like I would like to see everyone play it in that way thank you very much because that was fantastic but like to be honest most of the people in the cast I was like you are the best version of this cast I have seen like just in for every character I was like okay like no this this is why I wanted this show to be all along and I and I love the West End version of the show so if I'm saying that about the Broadway version like it was very very good shall we talk about the reason why I went to go and see it so obviously like I said I went to go and see it mainly because Aaron Tveit was playing Christian and and yes I am an Aaron Tveit fan so obviously I'm going to be a little bit biased but 
oh he was so good so so very good like sounded as good as he sounds on the cast recording but then that added in with like the acting choices that were made like I think a lot of that doesn't come through on the cast recording like El Tango de Roxanne is a prime example of it like it's good on the cast recording but seeing it there in front of you like just the like the the sort of descent into madness in the second act doesn't come through quite as well on the cast recording as I want it to like it's just a little bit too polished whereas when you see it in person like it's just that like the the, the like the actual like madness on his face especially like the last time I saw it when I was really up close and being able to see like a lot of the facial expressions so I did actually make a little note actually of like tiny little moments in the performance that I really really enjoyed like there's bits in Satine's first number like actually there's bits to do with like the staging of that in general that I think works a lot better from being sat closer where it feels sort of all-encompassing to do with like the lighting of it but then also you notice little bits of like him actually watching her from the box and seeing sort of him like get mesmerized by her before they actually like meet on stage which I never really noticed before because I'd always been sat quite far back little so seeing those little bits in the first act I think that's what I noticed the first time I went to see it the second time I went to see it we'll talk about in a minute because there's a particular song that I will talk about in a minute but the third time I went to see it was just like yeah the pure emotion of being that close up for the second act in particular um the sort of intensity of crazy rolling crazy rolling was particularly good the third time I went to see it also like there's a bit in El Tango de Roxanne where he just walks across the front of the stage and just starts like maniacally laughing while he's drunk and it's just a perfect moment and then the like emotion at the very end as well like being that close up for it it was um it was an experience it was an experience that's all I'm gonna say like I'm just rambling now about all these tiny little bits I loved but yeah just just so good so editing Chloe back here um I remembered the extra bit that I was going to say about Moulin Rouge and there's possibly another thing that I'll remember when I'm editing but um in terms of what I said about Funny Girl earlier where there's little moments where things don't necessarily go to plan obviously because I saw Moulin Rouge three times during the week like I noticed differences of things and there was one I think it was the first night it, maybe the second night I can't remember it was one of the nights that we went anyway and basically at the start of the second act Christian walks onto stage and sort of stands in front of the curtain and gives this little speech about the madness of first love and how if you can remember that madness everything that you see in the second act will make more sense and he came out to do that speech and again there was like a loud reaction and he sort of went to go and start it and it was like nope no I'm not quite ready to do this right now and had to sort of stop and compose himself and kind of like react to the audience and again I just like those little bits where where you sort of see them as actual people and see them sort of adjusting their performances based on things that happen in the theatre I always think it's a fun little thing so yeah I may have more thoughts but I'll interject later on we'll see I did have one more thought I've literally like just finishing editing this video and I'm like oh no I have one more thought to put in so Obviously, I have to talk about like particular moments that I really, really enjoy in Moulin Rouge in general. One of the things that I really like is actually the very, very beginning of the show. So there is a pre-show element to it where usually I would have loved to have like inserted some clips here, but then do not let you film it on Broadway. And um, you can get away with filming it on the West End on Broadway as soon as the actors are on stage. You cannot. But anyway, there's like a pre-show bit where a load of the characters are just kind of walking around stage, doing some like some of them are dancing, some of them are just sort of staring out the audience. It's it's a bit strange, but it's it's. it's sort of sets the mood for the show and um, at the very very end of that pre-show Christian walks on from it was the opposite side of the theatre from where we were sat on the first night and actually the reason why we bought the particular tickets we were sat in for the first night was because we knew where the next bit happened so he walks across the it's called the passerelle which is like the front part of the stage and um, the little walkway thing that he has so he walks across that and then he stands there and there's a Moulin Rouge stage and there's and there's a Moulin Rouge sign on the stage and he stands there sort of looks at the audience smiles at everyone and then does the thing to like make the sign lift up and it's just a really really fun moment and that was like obviously the first thing that I saw and I was very very close to that moment and it was just like a nice sort of I'm finally here actually watching it on Broadway like 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 I was supposed to and it was just a very like nice moment I'm very very happy that I booked those particular seats to be sort of right there for where the lifting of the sign happened the first time and it's still one of my favorite moments in the show it's just like it lets you know that it's 
it's a, well, as soon as like, like as soon as you see that moment you know it's about to start and the first song is so high energy as well that it's just a fun time um so the second time i went to see it let's talk about that shall we so el tango de roxanne is a very very intense song that i'm sure you've all heard me talk about before and there's like the way to sing this song that is on the cast recording like as it was written which which is a lovely way to sing this song like like i heard that version the first day i went to see it he sang it that way where the where the end note is sung one way there is a version of that song that he does on certain performances where he opts up for that end note which basically means that he sings the note higher than is originally written for it he does it and he doesn't do it every show he says he does it in most of them but from what i've gathered from being there that week um he doesn't tend to do it on days where there's two shows because obviously it's a little bit harder to do to like maintain it for two shows in one day like like you like you kind like you kind of need to save your voice if you're doing two shows in one day um but the second time, the second time we went to go and see it, he did do the opt up at the end of El Tango de Roxanne. And there was something about that song, like from the second he started singing it, that just felt bigger than when he'd sung it the time we'd seen it two days before. And me and Meg, like, so we went, basically the first day we went to see it, we weren't allowed to say Aaron Tveit's name before we went to see the show because we weren't jinxing it that he wasn't going to be on because that happened the last time I went to see Moulin Rouge in the West End. I said I want to go and see Jamie Moscato and then he was not on the day that I went. Um, so we weren't saying his name. We got into the theatre and very helpfully um, they gave us this little list of people that were on that night and as you can see his name is right there. So that was fine. But then I made the mistake in the interval of saying, well, do we think he's going to do the opt up? And then he didn't. And like, it was fine because it was still fantastic. As I said, like that song is amazing anyway. And it was fantastic. But he didn't do the opt up. And like, I, I wanted to hear him do the opt up. But then when we went on the Friday, we were like, right, we're just not going to mention it. We're, just, we're not talking about it. We're not going to attempt it. And we, we didn't mention it at the interval. And then it got to the song. And like I said, from the very beginning, like it just felt bigger like it felt like it was angrier and I was like hmm I can, I can see where this is going and then it got to like the end note and I like and, and you can sort of feel the reaction in the theatre when he does it like me and Meg I think Meg nearly dropped her phone when when it happened I was just there just like this <laughs> mm -hmm. and then it was and it was just very very good like like I said happy to see him in that like happy like i said happy to see him in that production whether he does the opt up or not but i'm very very happy that one out of the three times i went to see him that week he did do the opt up because it's so good and yes again i will link the clip down below where you can see what the opt up is because i feel like everyone should just watch that clip on a regular basis like i do <laughs> so in case anyone's wondering five stars for this production obviously i am gonna try and edit this video down now because that was an hour's worth of me rambling about theater yet again i did say it's probably gonna be long but i will try not to talk too much about moulin rouge again i say this i'm going to see it next month so you're gonna have to put up with me talking about it next month as well but I, I make no apologies anyway that is everything thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe all that good stuff down below and i will see you guys soon with a new video bye <laughs>